In 2018, over 10 million people visited the Great Wall of China, and it was so crowded at times that they were standing shoulder to shoulder. Obviously, that doesn't sound very safe or comfortable, so Chinese officials implemented a visitor limit to improve safety and protect the site. I'm mentioning this because it's ironic that the wall was originally built to keep people out of China but is now one of the world's hottest tourist destinations. And that's for good reason. The wall has been recognized as one of the most impressive architectural feats in history and has stood for thousands of years. In this video, we'll be going over a brief history of the wall, how it was built, and most importantly, what we can learn from its rich history. Contrary to what its name might suggest, the Great Wall of China isn't just one long wall. It's a series of walls, trenches, and natural barriers like hills and rivers. For simplicity, the series of fortifications was named the Great Wall of China and some parts were even built as early as 7th century BC. The Great Wall spans about 22,000 kilometers and is the longest man-made structure in the world. Wall sections were built over several dynasties, but most of what we see today was built in the Ming Dynasty which started in the 14th century and ended in the 17th. The Great Wall of China was built in sections over several dynasties. These sections were built for a variety of reasons, but to put it simply, the Great Wall of China's main purpose was to control the flow of people. The particular groups of interest were the small nomadic communities north of China. These communities were notorious for their ability to produce small horses, but were exposed to harsh climates and couldn't produce many agricultural resources. This led them to interact with the resource-rich China through trading, migration, raids, and even warfare. Therefore, the wall was one measure used by the Chinese to control these nomadic communities. The wall was built over thousands of years and construction methods evolved as newer technologies emerged. Building materials like brick and soil, among others, were all used in the construction of the wall. Let's go through how some of these materials were used with some examples. The walls that many people visit and recognize today were built in the Ming Dynasty between the 14th and 17th centuries. These walls were mostly built using brick because of their strength, durability, and constructability in rough mountainous terrains. Similar to today, workers built the walls with the brick and lime mortar mix. This was a new construction method at the time and emperors hired specialized workers to design and build the walls. This method also enabled the Chinese to build more efficiently in mountains compared to the rammed earth method they used in prior centuries. In this photo of the famous Jinshang Ling section of the wall, we can see some of their amazing work. Early walls and sections in plains, also known as flat earth, used what's called a rammed earth method. This is an ancient construction method that uses raw materials like soil to create structures like walls. Lime was mixed with soil and placed in wooden forms just like we would with concrete today. Each layer was compacted as they were added until the form was filled. This method built surprisingly strong walls, but many of the original walls have understandably eroded over time. However, some still stand to this day. Here's a picture of a wall at Jiayu Pass, one of the main passes of the Great Wall. The lower portion of this wall used a rammed earth technique. Apart from brick and soil, stone, sand, gravel, and even plants were used in some sections. As transportation was definitely a challenge during construction, sections of the wall near mountains or deserts took advantage of locally available materials. A paper written by Yang et al. investigated the use of sticky rice in ancient lime mortar mixes and concluded that the sticky rice actually enhanced the performance of the mortar. This is a great example of the ingenuity that went into the Great Wall's construction. So why not try some sticky rice in your next DIY project? If you've watched Game of Thrones, you know that life on the wall was pretty tough, and this was no different for soldiers on the Great Wall. Soldiers were often underpaid, away from their families, hungry, and faced extreme cold, which were factors that led to their low morale. As a result of their low morale, Soldiers sometimes fled without even putting up a fight when enemies approached the walls. Some soldiers even made friends with their enemies and served as their guides during attacks. 
The Great Wall is a magnificent structure, but it's really only as effective as the soldiers. So, what can we learn from all this? Here's a summary of the three lessons we can learn from the Great Wall. Walls are not the best way to keep people out. Workers are just as important as the people they serve. Innovation can be found in the places we least expect. In this case, it's sticky rice walls. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed the video by dropping a like and remember to subscribe for more videos simplifying construction.